Are you recording? Okay, so we're sitting at the ICC in Durban at the 2016 International Critical Psychology Conference. Um, and I'm Anthony Collins, I'm meeting with Kapana Rotelli. Yes, I'm Kapana Rotelli. And Just in um, case. <laughs> <laughs> we won't confuse that. Um, and uh, Kapan has been thinking about uh, African critical psychology. It seems that critical psychology in South Africa has been really well developed over the last 30 years, but it's going through different mutations. And, and the question of the day is, where's critical psychology going? But what is specifically African about critical psychology in South Africa? So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the funny part about this, well, first one must say this, I mean, why critical psychologists must get over this, this, this stuff that, you know, they can't talk about Africa. We have to theorize Africa. Yeah. So you have these two kinds of streams, that in one sense, African psychology is not critical enough, right? Yeah. It wants to be a psychology. This is Desmond Payne that's saying this. In another, the critical psychologists, who white and black, are not appropriating the notion, the object of Africa. And that's an important for me, to bring the two together, to have a critical African psychology or an African critical psychology. But I suppose one could ask, uh, what is, even is this object we're referring to when we talk to Africa? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously on the one hand, yes, the geographical continent, but but we're talking about something more than that. So what are we talking yeah, about? We are. We, we talk much more than that. I mean, it, there, there are concepts that are out there already that, that for me work. One is situatedness, another is a standpoint from feminist theory, yeah. uh, and, and another from funnel, and, and the others, lived experience. Yeah. So the idea of, of reality, for me it's an important. So there's two kinds of, of, of more African critical psychology. One is about a kind of structural situatedness, yeah. the materiality of life in Africa. Look, when I, when I'm, well, this might be different, we are in Durban, in the city, mm. but just you know, two streets down, the, the kind of, of the manner in which business is conducted yeah. is different from a highly regulated, highly industrialized society. Sure. And you have to take that into your right yeah. about this, this informality, uh, how the economy works, you know, and, and there's two kinds of economies. And you find it in, in other countries, in Tanzania, in where the informal economy is much bigger than the formal economy. And you have to theorize that. That's the one part. Yeah. Kind of materialist, more structural time, you know, there's, You're talking about this informal economy two blocks away, but the, the, the place place we're in is this, is this like soulless, generic, international office park aesthetic. I mean, this is made for people to feel like they're in a, a, a bland, transcendent West. Uh, but I don't understand. A place of money and cultureless. <laughs> Precisely because you have these two worlds existing yeah. here, you know, two blocks away, 500 meters away. And that that's what makes it Africa. It yeah. makes it, of course, South yeah. Asia, it makes it a part of, of Latin America. Yeah. And, and, and we, we write as if we, we, we exist in one world or yeah. the other. The other one we don't write as much about. It. Yeah. The people who tend to write about it, write mm. about it not uh, from a, a kind of structural point of view, structural yeah. kind of theorization. They, they tend to write from a cultural. This is the second part of it. Yes. There's, there's, there's both stuff that we can use there. Yeah. Know, a cultural, critical African psychology. And that's an important. But also you have to pause there, elaborate that difference between the cultural and the structural in yeah. your differentiation. Right. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the other one I, I've tended to call it a critical African psychology. But what I mean by it is a, it's a kind of structural African psychology, a materialist one yeah. that takes the economy, poverty, yeah. politics, yeah. politics. Now, the cultural one, the problem with people who, who identify and, and the name of Nkland Ramkiza comes, comes up here, yeah. who tends to straddle both at the same time, is they say, well, there's a, a certain purity to African culture. Yeah. Uh, there's a certain metaphysics to, yeah. uh, to Africa. I have uh, sometimes I say, okay, okay, uh, and more kind of cosmological, more religious kinds of critical. And it's quite essentializing, which which is well, a, them, a, a bit of a Jew. swear yeah. word. But give them their Jew. You say, well, okay, you, yeah. th this is, but this is not the kind of culture that I live. Yeah. Uh, the kind of culture I live in Africa is more hybrid. Yeah. more Creole, yeah. and that that also there's a productivity to write about that yeah. kind of stuff. So you really you really want to get at the hybridity, get at precisely the tension between the space of the ICC and the space of Point Road behind us. Right. And I can write from a cultural point of view, right, about how people live yeah. uh, as a as cultural 
subjects, but I also can write it from a kind of structural uh, as as workers, as the unemployed. You know? These are two kinds of uh, moves you can make in 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 both taking these two things, critical and African, and writing them together as part of psychology. Yes. And that for me, this is this is where we, we should be going. Of course, other people might are going other directions, psychoanalytic stuff, yeah. and that's okay too. You know, we have to. To be generative and say, and, not you, and what you're talking policy. about is very different from uh, the, the, the the often paternalistic move of, of community psychology of saying like, oh well, let's you know go to the poor and and help them from our you know transcendental, neutral Western psychological perspective. We're, we're, we're at the community <laughs> psychology, so I don't want to talk bad, bad because if, okay, so there's some people here who, who call themselves critical community psychologists, yeah. and that's fine. Mm. There's a there's a problem for me about about how something that 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 is generated at a particular conference in the U.S. is taken up, right? And some people are trying to make something out of it, and so this word for me, Africa, is precisely because you can't confuse it with any other. Of course, there's a debate in there, contestation, yeah. what Africa is, what it means, how to live it, how to write about it, you know. Uh, but it's a debate from here, about here. Absolutely. Right? This is, this is really important for me. So when I, I'm working in Senegal, uh, or in Cameroon, or I'm in, in part of South Africa, and people say, no, being queer is not African. I say, there is nothing as queer as Africa. Africa yeah. is so queer, you yeah. cannot believe it. Uh, but somehow, it's also because people are talking to some people out there, rather than ab among themselves. Yeah. So you know that you grew up with a guy who lives down the street, sure. who was cross-dressing, yeah. right? who likes boys. You, call, you can call him stubborn, you can call him all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But this, this is part of Africa, it's always been there. But, it's all, but it, it, it links back to your idea of that, that within certain versions of African psychology, the purification of the true African, essential African psychology, which, which then is paradoxically all those things that, that the West is in some way, patriarchal, heterosexist. Um, and you arguing for something much more mixed up. I mean, that's that's what I'm getting. That this is a, this, this is my this is a bit of a Briani is, of, a, of a theory. It's a Briani, I like Briani critical psychology. This is my Africa. Yeah. Look, in one moment I can visit my uh, my clan, quote unquote, my tribe somewhere. They are there in the northwest or in Limpopo. They exist, right? But this is not the world that I live in, yeah. right? I live in, in a highly industrialized, but at the moment, even here, even in that in that situation, I know that some people come from, you know, they, they come from the right, yeah. others come from the left. Yeah. And this is, this creolization, this hybridity is my life, yeah. you know? Uh, and 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 I am, I'm conscious, and I want to write conscious about it. Other people say, no, you know, we have to return to something. You know? I don't, I don't want to return to it. Yeah, you want to move there. forward. You want to no, be I don't want to move forward. Present. I'm you here. In the I'm present. here. Yeah. I want to live fully. Situated. I'm embedded in this. Yeah. This is my situation. So, so what are the tools? What are the intellectual tools? What are the concepts that are useful in, in this moment of the present? Yeah. Yes, damn, I like, I like that. So it was this, when somebody starts to say, when I start saying Africa, other people hear me differently. Yeah. That I'm going to only to, to talk to traditional healers yeah. or credo move to yeah. whose work I despise by the way <laughs> let's just say this uh, no because I live in a world I'm not close to to, to both the if there is the good side of of, of European modernity mm. but also the dark side of, yeah. Modernity, yeah. of col coloniality yeah. so I read Foucault but I also read uh, Pauline Ontology yeah. I read uh, Gugi Watio, but I also read Judith Butler. Sure. Yeah. So that, that for me is, I cannot, we cannot close ourselves. These are parts of the theoretical tools. Yeah. But there are other tools that, that are marginal. You have to literally walk the streets yeah. to find them. Yeah. You have to, people creating a new language to talk about youth, right. about themselves, their own lives. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you take time, and you know, we have as some interesting presidents who, who tell you some stuff says, no, I, I want this people. I, I literally take my camera, I hang out under the bridge, I say, so, so what's happening here? Yeah. You know? and, and of course we want to make, the, this is a, we're talking about a project that is, you know, the beautiful ones are not yet born. We want to make it, we want to bring it into being in this conversation. But let's, let's, let's say for, for people who, uh, who, are, who are being drawn in and we want to give them the introductory course. You want to say, listen, you need to have read this. You need to have thought about these concepts. What, 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 what are your key words? What are yeah. your key texts and the, all the, this the, that you the want the to give texts. to them? <coughs> 
One, Mantia Diawara. I think it's a paper either in 1970 to 1980 in the Journal Screen about black spectatorship, about how to resist uh, a narrative of Tarzan coming to save Africa. It's a must in a critical psychology course about basically how to read against the text. So when you're sitting in the movie, they are making you sympathize with the Rambo killing the natives. You say, no, yeah. you know, because movies do that. So movies are really great about that also to watch. So that's one. This guy called Pauline Horn told me both his work on, on traditions for both in African philosophy, yeah. both myth and reality. Really, really important. Yeah. You know, there are others that you know I can mention, yeah. I should have mentioned right at the beginning. It's funnel. Funnel is important. Of course. But, yeah. but all of fun, right? Yes. Funnel of Blacks in Westmark, White Marks, the Algerian Revolution. Uh, the wretched of the earth. Yeah. You have to read all of that and, and to what the decolonized, uh, you know, decolonized world and all of that. Yeah. You do have to read because of language. In this country, we're, we're really weird. You have to read what Nguki was doing in decolonizing the mind. You have to read it as a cultural project. Yeah. It's a fantastic work. I don't know whether I can go that far because it demands a whole re-education for me. But, and he says this. He says, African intellectuals are chicken, basically. And I know that I am part of it, right? But you have to go far, to, so far to, to rewrite the text, the script, in Sisu to in Sisu. So it's, it's part of you. Part of, and then there are, there are a number of, of uh, easy to, to get texts uh, in critical psychology in South Africa that you have to read. Of course, Derek Hooker's, you know, that book has to be read for. for for what it does yeah. as a moment yeah. in, in our country. And there are texts by, by critical psychologists here who are grappling with this. I mean, I'm thinking Desmond uh, Painter and the other text in the uh, annual review of critical psychology. Yeah. That sort of text, what, what it does. Uh, you also have to read then other kinds of work. So, uh, so African critical thinkers. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot from uh, Samir Amir. You yeah. have to read that. You have to read what was happening in uh, Ibadan. You have to read mm -hmm. Mahmoud, yeah. problematic sometimes, yeah. but you have to read it. You have to read Stella Nyanzi. Yeah. Little paper, a recent paper called Queer, Queering African Studies, I think yeah. it's called. Fantastic work. Uh, yeah. A guy called Kiburo, I forget, Negari or Kiburo. You have to read that, that work. Look, this is something that's emerging. Sometimes you will put some stuff in, take others out. Yeah. For instance, I'm thinking, Literature is an important thing. The literature is really good. So if yeah. you read in Disgrace, for instance, mm. as part of your or the life and times of Michael King, mm. if you put it in, in there to, to show what what uh, what writing yeah. lit, literally kind of devices do yeah. about thinking about a moment in a country, yeah. Yeah. that's an important thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that, 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 is that, that straddling of, of different, of not just the theoretical text, but the other cultural forms of right. conceptualization. Because it's, it's quite important. The, novels, the, this, the moment you say critical African, you're doing a transdisciplinary kind of thing. Yeah. You're moving between, between kind of African studies or, or those studies that study Africa yeah. and, and psychology, yeah. but also the, the other parts of critical thought that comes from, from all kinds of directions. Yeah. And one of the things you've been working on lately is trying to, to, to sort of create a, a system of differentiating these different critical and African psychologies, to, to, to lay them out and, and, and put them against each other. Describe that grid that you're developing there. <laughs> so, all of psychology done in Africa is African psychology. We have to be clear about that. So this, is, this is all Tony's thing. But okay, this is what he means. He means but if you are living in an African country, or, or you're writing about Africa, what you're doing in particular in relation to, to psychology, is African psychology. But because that's such a general term, it gives you a problem. What is called an African psychology, uh, in the sense of situating Africa uh, as a birthplace and as an, as an orientation, starts somewhere in 1970, really here. In, in the US, it starts in the 60s. But that's a different kind of African psychology. Yeah, yeah. So it starts with Mangani in about 1973, right? Yeah. It does a couple of texts right there. Yeah. And this is important why writing is, itself is important, or, or, or vehicles now like this. Yeah, yeah. So it starts right there. It picks up in the 80s, right? A number of people start writing yeah. some texts. So, so within this broad rubric of what you call African psychology, you have then this moment where people self-consciously are trying to do a kind of situated work, yeah. psychology of black experience, African psychology, yeah. a relevant psychology. So 
this is this is what I might call the best moment really of an African oriented psychology. Yeah. And even that is, is differentiated. Yeah. I mean you've got the kind of the, a white radical tradition yeah. there, you've got a you've got a black radical tradition right. there. Um, and, 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 and those are sort of moving in different directions already in, in, in the 80s when there's this kind of moment of right. contextualization in the and 80s. critical thinking. The 80s is a, yeah. is a kind of second moment yeah. where you start having Andy Dawes, yeah. uh, Holstock maybe, and yeah. others yeah. writing about so, you know, what is African psychology, Ian Moore and the others. It's a second moment. But at least they are, they are, they are mentioning the word Africa in their Africanization. And this is a really important right now in South Africa about you know is Africanization, decolonization, yeah. is Africanization transformation. Not necessarily. Yeah. Right? That's an important move. Yeah, I mean right? I think that, that one of the, the recent lessons is that the, the discourses of Africanization can be profoundly reactionary. They can. And and how, how does that fit in with you mapping these different uh, theorizations? Right. So in during that moment, so two things are happening. Some people are saying well, maybe this what they are what they're positive, mm. maybe there's a problem right there, yeah. you're calling it Africanization, right? But do you have some, some criticism uh, in the 80s and then seriously in the 90s mm. where you have a kind of splitting off, you have mm. a, a kind of situated feminist yeah. South African yeah. slash African psychology, you have a, a black uh, African South African psychology, yeah. you have a, a critical African slash South African yeah. psychology, so you have a, a kind of split, but all these people are trying basically to to, to come up with a, with a radical, a more left-leaning yeah. kind of psychology. But within that, now in the 2000s and 90s, you still have a conservative element about, yeah. about you know, Africa is something in the past, it's got mm. this, this mythical. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, you can't dismiss those people. In, in one sense, they're, they're critiquing Europe, yeah. but not critiquing Africa itself. Yeah. They're not yeah. They want to be psychologists. And there seems to be an idea that the, the post-colonial is a resurrection of the pre-colonial. It's to erase the colonial and, and not exactly not to go to the hybridity you're talking about, but to go back to the purity that you mentioned. And you seem to be In one sense, so listen, happy with that you, project. You, you, one is not completely dismissing that one because yeah. it's a search, right? Yes, it's a search. Perhaps the two things that have to happen, that this, the, the more kind of conservative African psychology or non-critical African mm -hmm. psychology or not critical enough African yeah. psychology yeah. have to meet with the, those who say, well, we're, we're, we're critical, we're not sure about Africa, I'm saying, okay, deal with this Africa, this yeah. stuff of yours about Africa. Yeah. And let's thresh this out seriously mm -hmm. because there are elements that are not spoken about here. Yeah. One is race. Yeah. Race yeah. becomes quite an important part yeah. of it because one side says, okay, your whiteness is preventing you to, to fully locate yourself here. Yeah. And the other, so the, the critical ones, I said, no, the cultural uh, nativist kind of mm -hmm. argument mm -hmm. is, is, is dismissing yeah. the, the dip, how our society has developed. Mm -hmm. And so these arguments have to be spoken up, to be lifted about that. Jill Eagle does a paper mm -hmm. about, about that in pins. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm forgetting it. Is it early 90s, about 94, yeah. 93? Yeah. Uh, which I think that one has to do a, a delayed response to it. Yeah. Because she's, she's critical about the cultural argument yeah. about clinical psychology. Mm. But I think perhaps now, if she was to rewrite it with this idea that, uh, you know, you, you can be cultural and progressive at the same time. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, uh, the contestation is about what culture means to you. Yeah. Right. And it's not obvious how to do that. I mean, this is, this is a kind of a work in progress. It is it's yeah. so much a work in progress. Uh, one of the interesting things... But hang on, yeah, yeah. the question I would ask you is, it's not as if Europe is not doing the work in progress, but it yeah. always looks like it's, it's, it's closer to the end of history. It's not yeah. close to the end of history. Yeah. Literally now, they're going to deal with cultural problems in Germany, in Sweden, because of this mass migration of people yeah. into those countries. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because the, the exact move in Europe is to try and re retreat to a, a mythical Europe. Right. And we're seeing it currently with the rise of Donald Trump as exactly. the potential yes. US president. <laughs> Who, I mean, by the way, I think is going to win. The notion of, of, of make America great again, which is all about creating a, uh, this, trying to create this fictional mythology of the 50s as something that could yeah. exist in the 21st century. And as outsiders, I mean, it's preposterous, but clearly for people who are located within that, it's got some kind of, of purchase or something that sticks and, and invigorates and creates enthusiasm. So and cultural wars are, are never dead. I mean, yeah. they're always, yeah. you know, 
uh, and culture itself is always on the move. Mm. Uh, some moments it speeds up, yeah. but at other moments, even when you think there's a, it's it's static, there's always you know shifts underneath. It seems that 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 in a way one of the ways in which culture has speeded up in South Africa in the last year that's relevant to us is roads must fall and all the split offs of that. That something's happened with the technology of social media. Um, that now Twitter and Facebook uh, um, are, are allowing ideas to coalesce and spread very rapidly. So the kind of monastic uh, uh, reader of hard text has been displaced by a kind of on-the-go student who's involved with rapid communication. And this has led to a, a, a real flourishing of a decolonial discourse, which I think is really part of our critical psychology in a different way. So what have you got to say about the whole roads must fall and the explosive uh, offshoots of it? Something you, you, you're not stressing enough. Mm. It's precisely uh, technology, right? Yeah. As part of the cultural you know, yeah. uh, uh, tools that are available to us. Yeah. That's making this possible. Absolutely. So it's the hashtag and social media yeah. makes this moment possible. Um, and so critical psychologists have to, to bring that. To, you have mm. to do kind of uh, studies of technology yeah. and how it's changing, changing the moment. At, at the same time, it's almost as if the the, the the kids on the street have 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 accelerated far ahead of us. I mean, we and we're still precisely. sitting with the piles of books on our Pre desks, precisely. and they're exchanging memes that are already shifting consciousness, forming new social coalitions. This is happening very fast, and and some of it uh, seems to me really invigorating and some of it seems to me a little bit terrifying. Like have you written about... There's part of me that pulls back when the buildings are burning uh, on campus. About, have you written about social media technology in your work? Do you, uh, do you I haven't, but, but I talk about it in my courses a lot, yeah. Absolutely. And, and how, when did you start seeing the power of social media technology? Well, well, for, for, for us as sort of as, uh, African critical theorists, it, it, I think that when Rhodes Must Fall suddenly went from someone putting a bucket of shit over a statue to a thing that was just flying around the country, um, and that every time I checked my Facebook, there was, there was like new little things, and, 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 and this mix between uh, explosive opinions and, and pieces of, of really quite deep theorizing just, just getting merged into a, a kind of a washing machine in the spin cycle. Um, and this seemed to me to be very interesting, and it seemed what's interesting about it is not just the, the, the proliferation of the media, but this is producing subjectivities. That to be 19 and 21 years old with this stuff happening around you is very different from me sort of, you know, walking to my lectures, being given this kind of neo-colonial curriculum uh, and plodding through, you know, several works of Shakespeare and then sneaking off to get a banned copy of Fanon. It's a totally different experience now. And it's, it seems to be, it's, 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 it's more dynamic, it's kind of, it's radical in ways that are different from old definitions of radicalism. I mean, it's not it, radical in that, oh, it's challenging class and race, it's, it's doing something else as well. Yes. But it also redefines the role of the teacher. Yeah. Right? If, if mm. someone, you, you give them a list of reading, mm. but they get as much of their reading from Facebook, from yeah. posts on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And, and it, it's been incredible to, to see how, who's quoted on, on Facebook. So yeah. they, they put uh, Sylvia Winter, for yeah. instance, mm. the conversation between uh, Joseph, uh, James Baldwin and, and uh, Audre Lorde. Yeah. And they come th with that. Yeah. You know, because everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Somebody yeah. says, let me see what, but it's not on your course. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, they, they, they are challenging you. Yeah. Yeah. So what is my role? So you have to be, to, to rethink your, your position. Absolutely. What does it mean to teach? Yeah. What does it mean to be a critical and psychologist it's also, in this it's, moment? It's radical in that it subverts the idea of the uh, uh, yeah. authority, the authority of the professor. Yes, I'm the teacher. Because I'm suddenly the internet itself, yeah. as a technology, is much more authoritative and comprehensive and far-reaching than you can ever be. Like, your little specialist a regime that you've been peddling. If um, you're an African psychologist or a critical psychologist here now situated and not on the on social media, there's a problem right yeah. there. Because you know they, they, they're going to challenge you. Absolutely. Like they are challenging you says, did you watch Leicester? What is yeah. Leicester? Because yeah. Leicester gets blows up on social media. Absolutely. And you have to go there and say, okay let me let me watch yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And I, I don't understand why we're not doing the kind of work that those kids did for Leicester, for critical psychology and African psychology. Well, we're busy we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it. We're trying to catch up with the kids. Absolutely. Old guys are like, 
you so know, trying to get better following, energy. I've been following some, some of the teachers who are doing, who are bringing Twitter and yeah. Facebook in the class. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, I mean, yeah. how some they are managing to get those kids who, who could not speak up in class. Yeah. It changes the dynamics because Absolutely. then they can tweet and then it flashes on the board right in the yeah. back, yeah. Uh, right there. It changes the dynamics Absolutely. already right? because yeah. these people do have a voice mm. and social media and technology yeah. are doing precisely that. Yeah. And so, so when people come into your class and they videotape you, yeah. it, it, you know, you, you've been put on YouTube yeah. and they think... Yeah, suddenly yeah. you realize you're being recorded on someone's <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> Uh, the, our yeah. teacher, our professor. But of course, there's the, the boring old fart in me that is like, yes, that's great, but they need to read the books. They need the hard books. They need to have read the Homi Baba and stuff. Like, spent hours in the night, you know, laboring over these complex texts to develop their their critical faculties. And 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 there's a real tension between that that idea of really spending hard work with with with, the, with theories and. And, 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 and the kind of instant meme and the like, the flash of an idea, but that perhaps lacks a kind of a depth and an articulation that happens in the, in the moment of social but media. But isn't it funny that in that moment you, you are precisely what, what the kind of culturally East African psychology does it, that yeah. there's something good somewhere yes, yeah. in the past, that, yeah. but you're doing it for we, this, we, we, that we, the text is trying, authority. We're trying to sanctify history and monumentalize yeah. it. And, you know, to, uh, it's a brave new world, really. It's a, it's yeah. an it's an amazing world. But that this moment needs to be theorized, yeah. needs to be spoken about. I'm saying theorized again. This is yeah. all part of you. You need to, to 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 put it out for analysis. Yeah. yeah. To be spoken about in the classes yeah. as we are making ourselves in different way, in different ways right now. Yeah. And what's what what for you personally is the most fun in all of this? <coughs> I mean, I'm reading. Uh, a lot of people say this that, that I get as much of my news mm -hmm. right from from the media, from yeah. social media. Right? Yeah. So I see that this this blog or this uh, this this Facebook page yeah. uh, has something interesting, yeah. and I read that yeah. you know, and and it might come from anyway. It might be sure. somebody who has uploaded uh, a text that I, I wasn't aware of. Yeah. It might be somebody who's uploaded an interview. Yeah. Um, it might be a movie. Yeah. So, uh, and but then I have to read it against against an, uh, kind of on authority, yeah, and I'm yeah. thinking, wow. Yeah. And this this person might be a uh, a blogger in in Nigeria, for sure. Who's just who's yeah. just a look? You know, yeah. people have not thought about this quite clearly. But and but to push that even more into in, in your individual subjectivity, when you when you you say when that Nigerian blogger posts that thing that you weren't aware of and you find it interesting. What is that? That finding it interesting, that the effective thing of like, uh, wow. Let me give you what, the material. What, what, not, not just affect, <laughs> affect this material. Literally, if I'm on 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 pin, yeah. you know, what, what, uh, I see a pin, right? Yeah. And it's uh, my pen. You must see my pen, right? Yeah. Uh, and and or I see a, a an image. Yeah. Uh, in that moment, if if this image is really the kind of thing that interests me. Yeah. I pick it up. Yeah. I make pens. Literally, I make. I'm, I'm going to make pens. Yeah. Well, what has given me uh, uh, support yeah. to to push how I get dressed yeah. comes from social media, yeah, from absolutely. Instagram. Yeah. But it might be an image of a photographer that I didn't yeah. who's photographing depression. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah, saying. Exactly. Well, here's a, here's how I, I photograph depression. Yeah. Man, you can photograph depression. It's coming from totally, and this is a, a, a kid who, who has never had any clinical psychology sure. or, or is sure. even not even a photographer. Yeah. He's used his iPhone or phone yeah. to photograph. I take yeah. that, I work with it, I, I write that yeah. into into my, my subjectivity, Absolutely. my affect. But it's it, yeah. you know, but also write it in a, in a kind of more analysis. So I, I bring other tools yeah. that were not there before, yeah. and they're created from all over. Yeah. You know, I take it from Russia, from some yeah. some some guy who's who's, and then they connect. They come to South Africa. I go right there wherever it is. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that 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 is the moment of pleasure in it. That when you find that cool thing, the the the, the moment of pleasure, which is almost. It's, it's a moment which is the antithesis of the moment of kind of colonial alienation. It's a kind of recovery of a new thing that is, that is a thing that, 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 that you can um, take up and become something, something, yeah. something happier, something better than, than, than the kind of regimes of power that historically have tried to flatten things out.
And I think that's, that, 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 that's really interesting, and perhaps one of the, the ways forward in, in critical psychology but you, to look you, at, you are, to, to look at yeah. these, 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 these inspirational moments where, where you in, intersect with something that makes you able to be something that you weren't yet until you did that, but somehow in that moment there's a kind of a, there's a pleasure. An there's unanticipated a pleasure, yeah. yeah right. But the pleasure is, a, it becomes a quite a, a extraordinary, because in mm. one sense, the pleasure of going into a bookshop, yeah. picking up a text, yeah. going home and reading it, or a yeah. theorist, right? And here's a new person, you, you know, someone, and another, a colleague next, you know, in the next room says, Here's a, a new book. You take it. The pleasure is private. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's shared with the, the other person. Yeah. Says, Tell yeah. me what you think. Yeah. Facebook de redefines that yes. because at that moment when you yeah. see this and there's a, another hundred likes, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's already you're, multiplying. You're in a community yeah. already, yeah. right yeah. there. And this shared pleasure, yeah. literally, yeah. the sharing of pleasure yeah. creates a different community, yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. In in at a, at a kind of speed that was yeah. not there before. Yeah. You, somebody says, "Oh, yeah, I saw you. You read this, and, and you, yeah. you made a comment. You made a comment in public, and so right there." You and I suppose precisely those communities in the moment of coming into being, that is Africanness. I mean, that's yeah. the contemporaneity, that's the hybridity as against the, the these kind of historical, nostalgic views. Yeah. So and, and perhaps that's where we're going to. <coughs> and a recent paper that's coming out in a, in a geography, economic and social geography journal in, in Holland, is analyzing people from all over the world, like a, a million views, a three, at the last time I checked, 3,000 comments yeah. about people commenting on that wedding that happened in Kwasi Natal, in Kwa yeah. Yeah. That paper <laughs> says, to, to show you how people says this happens in Africa, right? At that moment, yeah. I'm saying, well, they, you know, at a certain moment, people might not have gotten married. Yeah. But what this this video from yeah. ENCA is yeah. doing yeah. is lifting it up, yes. and the and the social media then multiplies it. Yeah. And then, so you have to analyze it at, at two levels, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what these people are in in a rural, semi-rural uh, kind of peri-urban yeah. small township in in a place in South Africa. But it's playing at a global level, absolutely. and you have these two worlds coming. Yeah. Out. That's where my Africa lies. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's um, uh, Anthony Collins and Papana Ratele coming down to earth again at the uh, <laughs> 2016 <laughs> International Community Psychology <laughs> Conference uh, in Durban, and uh, critical African psychology keeps moving forward. Yeah.